Welcome to a new video of heat transfer. Today we are studying transient heat conduction. So obviously we live in a three-dimensional world and the world around us evolves in time. So in general also the temperature field will depend on space. So I indicated here with a vector x and time. So for example in Cartesian coordinates we have the temperature that depends on x, y, z, and also on time. But up to now, we have only considered cases where the temperature depends only on space. So, in this lesson, we want to start talking about temperature that instead depends on time as well. So, let's look, for example, at the case of a uh, of a cup of coffee, we have um, a hot cup of coffee and we put it on the table and obviously it cools down over time in a colder environment. The question is, does it cool uniformly? Meaning, does the temperature profile here depend on space? Well, in general, obviously, it's not uniform. So we have that the coffee inside the cup will be hotter inside, in the middle, whereas on the surface of the cup, it will be cooler. And the temperature distribution obviously will change over time. So another case, if we want to cook a large piece of meat. Also, this is another case where the temperature is not uniform. So the outer, outer part of the meat will be hotter than its core. So these are two cases where in general the temperature depends on space, where they have a coordinate, spatial coordinate, coordinate system we choose, and over time. And to simplify the analysis, we can ask ourselves whether we can neglect the dependence of temperature on space. So in this case, we can assume the temperature depend that depends only on time. So we have to find cases where the situation is a good approximation. And these cases are called cases studied under the lumped system analysis. So in general, the lumped system analysis, so when the temperature depends only on time and not in space, is valid when we consider small objects and the material of the object is characterized by quite high thermal conductivity the convection coefficient h that cools or warms up the object is quite low so for example for example cases where we have a small aluminum ball or a small copper ball so we have a schematic here we have a small object and the temperature for example in this case is 50 degree celsius at a certain time and we can approximate the temperature to be 50 degrees everywhere on the surface of the sphere, but also inside the sphere. So we neglect the temperature in space. Let's look at this case a bit more in detail. So we have, for example, a small copper ball and this cold small copper ball is in a, immersed in a fluid motion. The convection coefficient is H and the temperature of the fluid is T infinity. So T infinity is larger than the temperature of the object initially. So we actually inject the heat by convection. What is the energy balance? Well, we must conserve energy so the energy that in, it is inje injected inside the object by convection must be equal to the increase of internal energy of the object. 
So another question is how does the temperature of the object change? Remember that we're assuming the, the temperature to be uniform in space for this case, but to change over time. So here I'm plotting the temperature of the object over time. At time equals zero, the temperature of the object is Ti everywhere on the surface of the object and inside. And as the object warms up, the temperature will certainly increase and will approximate T infinity, the temperature of the fluid that's assumed to be constant. So this is, would be an asymptotic behavior of this kind. So let's do a bit of mathematics to express that dependence in mathematical form. So as always, we write the energy balance mathematical form so we have convection equal to the change of internal energy the convection is h a s times delta t in this case t infinity minus the temperature of the object at a certain time t h is the convection coefficient and a s is the surface of the object the change in internal energy is given by the density of the object times the volume times specific heat times dt dt. So the derivative of the temperature with respect of time. And here I'm indicating m, so that's the density of the material. Although from now on, for clarity, I'm just dropping the subscript m. But remember, rho here is always the density of the material. So we rearrange. So we move the temperature, T infinity and T at a certain time, T here on the right hand side and everything else on the left hand side. And now we can integrate. We integrate for a certain time zero at a generic time T and from the temperature Ti, that's the initial temperature of the object to a generic temperature T. That's the temperature at time t. So this, we can do this integral. We have a natural log. Now we can rearrange this expression and we obtain an exponential. So we know that in lump system analysis, we have an exponential behavior. So we can express the temperature in this way. So the temperature is equal to T infinity plus the temperature at Ti, at the initial temperature minus T infinity, the temperature of the fluid far away from the object times this exponential. We can do a quick check. So if we set T equals zero, we must recover the initial temperature. Let's see if this is true. We put T equals zero here. E to the zero is one. So T infinity and T infinity simplify out. So the temperature is Ti. Now let's take the limit of T going to infinity. This is a positive quantity. So E minus a positive number times T, T going to infinity. This, all this object here goes to infinity. We have T equal T infinity. That's exactly what happens. So the temperature of the object tends to the temperature of the fluid in the long, uh, long time. So we can plot this exponential solution and that's exactly the shape that we saw before. That's a, this is the exponential solution, we plot it. So we see that the temperature increases from Ti, this is the initial temperature, and tends to, in, to infinity. So we can call the exponent B. So the larger B, the larger is the response of the temperature over time. So large B means that the temperature really increases rapidly and approx approximate, is approximated by T infinity, tends to T infinity asymptotically quite quickly. So when do we have this faster response? When we have a large H, we have a large surface area. So we have more convection. And when we have a small internal energy here, so uh, 
when, for example, we have a small density, a small volume, and also small specific heat. So this makes sense. So the case of, uh, for example, a small, uh, a small object, like the copper ball we saw before. But let's see a bit better when can we actually ex assume that the temperature depends only on time. So we can borrow the idea of the network. If you remember in the past lessons, we talked about electric network. That can be a great approximation for uh, heat conduction networks or heat convection networks. And we can borrow this idea for the transient case. So let's take, for example, an object and the characteristic length or dimension of this object is LC. And let's say we warm this object up, so we inject some Q, some heat. So we have an internal temperature, so a temperature T in, that's typical of the inside of the object. We have TS, that's typical temperature on the surface of the object, and we have T infinity, the temperature of the fluid that warms this object. So we have two resistances in series. We have a resistance due to convection and we have a resistance due to conduction. So we can write them down. And if you, if you remember, the resistance due to conduction is in this form. So LC divided by KAC. So AC is the cross-sectional area of the object, and K is the thermal conductivity of the material of the object. The resistance due to convection is one divided by HAS. So H is the convection coefficient, AS is the surface area of the object. So when can we assume then that the temperature does not depend on space. Well, this makes sense when the resistance due to conduction is much smaller than the resistance due to convection. So the heat just flows quite freely inside the object, does not encounter resistance inside the solid. So the partial T, partial X, which is representative of the change of the temperature over X, tends to zero. So in this case, the temperature inside the object, the representative of the temperature inside the object, is close to the temperature of the surface. Of course, it will never be exactly equal, but that would be a very good approximation. So all we have to do, we have to substitute the expression for the two resistances in this inequality, which is actually an asymptotic inequality. So we have LC KS time divided by KS AC much smaller than one divided by HAS. But now let's consider an object that has, for example, a spherical form shape. So we have that the cross-section layer AC is comparable with the surface layer AS. So if these two are comparable in a, and we have an asymptotic inequality, then we can actually simplify these two quantity out of the inequality. So we get this simplified form, we rearrange, and we get that this non-dimensional number, H times LC divided by KS, is much, much smaller than one. And this non-dimensional number is called the BO number. And for engineering purposes, we can assume that we can use the LAM system analysis when the BO number is about smaller than 0 0.1. But let's look at the BO number in another way. We still have our schematic here of the network. So we have this Q that flows through the network. So it's transferred by convection and then by conduction. So the Q is a delta T divided by a resistance. But since these two resistances are in series, the Q conduction must be equal to the Q convection. So we can write Q conduction, Q convection using the resistance formula. And these two are equal. 
So if we set them equal, then we get this expression. We can rearrange, and again, we get that the ratio of the two resistances is equal to the ratio of the two delta temperatures. And we're writing in this way. And that's exactly what we found before. So the difference in temperature between TS and T internal, so the surface temperature and the temperature inside the object, this difference is much smaller than the difference between the temperature of T infinity, far away, so that's the temperature of the fluid and the temperature of the surface. Here, the actually, the sign doesn't really matter, so you can interpret this as the absolute value of the delta T. And so we can see, we can interpret the BO number as the ratio between R conduction and R convection. So when this is much smaller, the resistance to conduction is much smaller than the resistance to due to con convection. So we have introduced this typical length scale LC that represents the object. So a typical dimension. And typically this is uh, defined as the volume divided by the surface area. So for different objects, for example, an ellipse or a surface uh, or, or for example, a sphere, or a cube, you can find different LC. So for the BO number to be small, the typical situation is when LC is small, when H, the convection coefficient, is small, and when we have a very high thermal conductivity, like in the case of copper. So the last interpretation of the BO number is that we have a BO number, we can write it in this way. So the BO number is also interpreted as the ratio between convection and conduction. And remember, the first thing to check in problems of transient is the BO number. So if you have a small BO number that's much smaller than one, then we are in a good, good position because we can approximate the temperature to be varying only over time, not in space. And remember that this is an as asymptotic uh, inequality, so the BO number is non-dimensional. Much, much smaller than one means that the smaller the BO number, the better the approximation that we're using is valid. It's the case of engineering application, usually when the BO number is smaller than 0 0.1, this is valid. Okay, in the next lesson, we instead, we consider problems where the, the temperature depends on space and also on time. Thank you.